Hello everyone, and welcome to my Minecraft Technic Pack Tutorial Guide. Um, today, I'll actually be showing you guys how to make that diamond making machine I mentioned earlier. Um, I know it's taken me a long time to get around to it, but I've just been working on well, a bunch of different things in the, pa in the past few days. So, well, let's get started. Uh, first thing I'm going to show you guys is the components you'll need in order to make all the stuff you'll need above. And just ignore the wool above that's just to help me sort out where everything needs to go when I finally get upstairs. Uh, so to start, the first thing you're going first couple things you're gonna need to make are eight automatic crafting tables. Now to make an automatic crafting table, you need to make this recipe, which is four wood gears and a crafting table. If you forget how to make a wood gear, it looks like this, four sticks like so. I'm actually gonna turn the sound right down. No, I don't have any interruptions. Um, you're going to need to make 11 wooden pipes. Uh, the recipe looks like this. Two wooden planks and a piece of glass in the center. We'll give you eight wooden transport pipes. Now, you don't need to make 11 sets of these. That would make 88 pipes. You only need 11. So just make this make this recipe twice. That'll give you 16. You'll have five left over. Um, you also need to make yourself 11 redstone engines. The recipe for a redstone engine looks like so. Three wooden planks, one piece of glass, two wooden gears, and a wooden piston. Now, the, these three items here make up the majority of the system I'll be showing you upstairs on how to auto automate making diamonds. Um, what the system actually does is it takes diamonds you input, and I believe it's once every 120 or 160 seconds, it recycles the diamond, and it every time one diamond goes through, it creates the materials for another one half diamond. So when you send two diamonds through, you will make a profit of one diamond. Uh, I know that doesn't quite make sense at the moment, but I'll explain it when I get upstairs. Um, one, another key feature you're going to need for this to work is a furnace. Now I'd recommend using the Industrial Craft 2 induction furnace. Uh, if you've been playing around with Industrial Craft, you'll find it's not too complicated to make. Um, but I will show you the rest of the furnaces just so you can see the progression. A uh, normal furnace, everybody knows how to make this. Eight pieces of cobblestone like so makes a furnace. The upgrade from there is the iron furnace, which still uses coal and charcoal as fuel. Requires five iron and gets like a house. There's your iron furnace. The step up from there is the electric furnace, which requires one iron furnace, two redstone, and an electronic circuit. Now, for those of you who forget how to make the electronic circuit from the first video I showed you, or in which I showed you it, it looks like so, which is six pieces of copper cable, a piece of refined iron, and two pieces of redstone. Refined iron, just to refresh you guys, uh, in case you've forgotten any some, any of this stuff. The refined iron is made by re-smelting a iron ingot in a furnace. Uh, and to make copper, or copper, copper cable, sorry, you just three pieces of copper in the middle, three pieces of rubber on the top, three pieces of rubber on the bottom. All right. Now for the induction furnace. Now this is a little bit complicated as I won't be showing you exactly how to make this, but I'll be showing you the majority of it. So you need seven pieces of copper around the outside like so, an electric furnace in the center, and an advanced machine block at the bottom. Um, now that's one thing I haven't shown you in my videos yet. That's actually one of the more um, top tier things in Industrial Craft 2. I will show you how to make that at some point. Uh, now the recipe to make an advanced machine block is a standard machine block, which is eight refined iron in the shape of a chest or furnace, and two advanced alloy, and two carbon plates. Now those two materials, advanced alloy and carbon plates, are a little bit more complicated to come by, and I'll start with advanced alloy. Now advanced alloy are made by making mixed metal ingots, which require three refined iron, three pieces of bronze, and three pieces of tin in a recipe like so. You can't swap them back and forth, as that won't work. As you can see here, it has to be like that. You'll get two mixed metal ingots. So if you make this exact recipe, you'll have just enough to make one advanced machine block. And by taking these and placing them in Industrial Craft 2 compressor, and giving it about 30 seconds or so, I think, it will compress one of these down into a advanced alloy and then it will compress the second one as well and that's how you make the advanced alloy for that the um as you can see here that's what it looks like again in order to get the carbon plate 
Um, it works along the same idea, except you have to macerate 16 coal first. So you need to get yourself 16 coal dust in order to make two carbon plates. We're going to make four raw carbon fibers by placing four coal dust like so. And this is a shaped recipe. It's not shapeless, so it has to be in a square. It doesn't I don't think it matters where the square is, but it does have to be in a square, as you can see. Um, then we're going to turn our raw carbon fat, raw carbon fiber into raw carbon mesh, and this is a shapeless recipe, so it doesn't matter where they are. And we're going to make two raw carbon meshes. And then from there, we're going to put the mesh in a compressor that will compress it down into the carbon plate. And then we can make ourselves an advanced machine block, and in lieu of that, we can then make the induction furnace. Now, the reason I like the induction furnace, and I'll actually show you that when I get upstairs, is it has two spots for smelting stuff. So when you're inputting items using a BC or a build craft pipe, it will actually pipe items into the first slot. And if for some reason it were to overflow, like if you're inputting items too fast, it will actually overflow into the second stack. So you technically have two stacks worth of items to fill up before you have to worry about um, overflowing. Now, if you're now for the output, it will only output or it will output from the first stack first. So if you overflow too much into the second one, as the output um, stacks can only hold up to 64, eventually you will overflow theoretically if you were to input too much. Um, now one. One or two final things you're going to need to know for the setup upstairs is from the Red Power mod, which is a really cool mod that basically allows you to do a lot more with redstone in a lot smaller area. The only problem with it is it can be really complicated to figure out how to use. So I'm going to show you how to craft the four, I believe it's the four basic pieces of Red Power mod that you will need in order to make the rest of the uh, red power timers and such. We're actually going to make a red power timer and a red power repeater. You can make a normal redstone repeater instead if you'd like. I find I just prefer to make it as it's from the same mod and I feel that it probably works a tad bit better. Um, I could be wrong, but basically that's what I choose to do. Alright, so to begin we need to smelt smooth stone to make stone wafers. So I'm sure you're well aware if you put cobblestone in a furnace, you will get smooth stone. If you resmelt the smooth stone, you will get stone wafers, which are used in red power. So we're going to start with a, let's start with the stone wire. It's the simplest one. Uh, it simply requires one stone wafer and a redstone piece above it. Make a stone wire and you'll need, well, I don't know exactly know how many you need. I don't remember, but you will need a few of these. You will need stone anodes, which require three stone wafers on the bottom, three redstone in the middle, and one on top. It looks kind of like a T, which is the same as the recipe. Makes three of these, so you, I believe you only need about three of them, so you shouldn't need to make much more than this. Uh, stone cathode, which is basically just a stone wafer and a redstone torch. Looks like a redstone torch on a wafer, pretty much. And the stone pointer, which is a wafer, redstone torch, and a stone. And as you can see, it looks like a torch with a pointy thing sticking out of the end, hence stone pointer. Um, now, in order to make a timer, one sec here. All right, the, in order to make the timer, we need to put a stone wafer in the top right, in the top left, a stone anode, which is the T in the bottom left and bottom right, stone wires in the top center, left middle and right middle, a stone cathode in the bottom, very bottom middle, and a stone pointer in the center. And that will make your, make a timer. Now that's the most important part that we're going to need here. You can just make yourself a redstone timer if you don't want to have to make this next one. Um, out of simplicity, it should work exactly the same way I've used it, but I just find it a little bit more reliable to use the actual modded repeater than using the non-modded repeater. So to make the red power repeater, needs or you need to make three stone wafers on the left, a stone cathode in the top center, one stone anode in the middle, a stone wire at the bottom. And then on the right here you've got a stone wire, stone wire, and a stone cathode, and that makes one repeater.